start standing here again. And today I'm going to go through my next review of tactical gear. Today I'm going through specifically chest rigs and plate carriers. I've got two that I'm going to go through today, so we'll cut to the first one just about now. Alright, what's up guys? This is the first uh, vest I'm going to go through today. This is more of the chest rig style. Um, it's very simple. I got this personally from an army surplus store for I think it was £12. So, you know, it's quite a cheap vest if you're getting into airsoft, it's really good, it served me quite well for a while. But in the end, I just wanted to have a more kind of customizable vest, because this is, you know, all attached, you can't change around anything. So I'll go through the features on this one, and then we'll move on to the next one. The main features of this are the triple, or the three double stack M4 mag pouches across the front. That means that you can stick two M4 mags in each of these, or Stanag mags if you've got an SA-80 maybe, something like that. So you can carry six magazines across there. You've got these two quite large, um, I call them admin pouches. They're not admin pouches in the airsoft sense, but that's the closest thing I could find to them. And in these I used to keep maybe a spare bag of ammo, some grenades, a speed loader, gas, anything like that. You could even stick spare um, mags in there as well. But they're a bit harder to reach if you're going to reload. They're a bit you know, more awkward than these front three. Then the last pouch you've got on here is kind of in here. Um, I believe that was used for the bulletproof inserts when this was actually used as a military thing. Uh, I think that was um, the old school sappy plates, the small arms protective inserts, the old versions of them, not the new shaped chest rig ones. But, you know, that can go in there. I used to keep um, any documents in there I'd need, maybe my wallet, something like that. It's just nice to have it in there and know that once you pop this over, it's not going to drop out. Now that's pretty much it for this vest. It's a pretty bare bones vest. It's, um, it does, the one thing that it does have is I can never find it, is these four poppers. And that can either be for a knife or a radio pouch. Um, I've seen both of those. I'm sure you can get other types of pouches with poppers on them, but they're the two I've seen um, to attach on here. I always, I always expect it to be on my right because I'm left-handed, which is why I always get it wrong. Uh, but it's on your left-hand side. So if you're left-handed, that you might not want to use that because obviously if you try and shoulder a gun over the top of a radio, it's not going to work as well. So they are pretty much the only features of this vest. It's got the cross straps and it's got a tightenable strap across your back. That's it. It's very lightweight. It's nice and easy to use. It's bare bones. It's good because it will keep you cool while you're wearing it because obviously it doesn't cover large amounts of your body. So if you're in a hot climate, maybe, this would be really cool. Um, the one reason I didn't like it is there's no kind of, I wouldn't say back support, but there's nothing on your back to hold it in place. So it tended to pull forwards on me a lot and it tended to hurt my shoulders a bit. Um, I've got kind of odd shoulders from climbing and archery. I actually injured one of my shoulders a while ago climbing. So I think that's why this vest didn't really suit me too well. And that's why I've moved on to my current vest. But this is a really good vest if you're looking to get into archery. Maybe you're doing some uh, British military mil sim, like older British military, because I don't use these anymore. Um, but these are really cool. They're nice if you want just a light rig to run around in. Um, and that's pretty much it. They're quite cheap to get. And we'll move on to the next vest now. So we'll cut about... Here. Okay, I know I said I'd cut to the next vest here, but just to show that this is an ex-service vest, it does actually have a name and rank written here. This one is actually uh, Lance Corporal Cornish. So if by any chance you happen to watch that, mate, I've got your vest. Anyway, we'll swap to the next one just now. So this is the second vest I'm going to go through today. This is the one I currently use during Airsoft. And uh, this is the Airsoft replica of a London Bridge trading vest. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of that company before, LBT or London Bridge Trading, uh, they are a British-based company and they make tactical gear, pretty much. That's basically what they do. Um, now, I like the look of this vest, uh, which is mainly why I got it. I later found out that it was a British-made one. Uh, this one was actually made in Britain as well, even though I ordered it off a, um, I think it was an American site. This was actually made in England, which is, you know, quite cool. It's... Obviously not a real LBT vest because they're very expensive. So anyway, that's just a point I thought I'd go through. Now, this vest, for those of you who are new to Airsoft, has um, these little strips across it, which is called molly webbing. 
Now that allows you to customise what you've got attached to your vest. In my case, I have two single M4 pouches here. Uh, those can be taken off and I'll be doing a video at some point about Molly and what it does. Uh, I haven't quite planned as to where that's fitting in yet. So this is kind of what the vest looks like on. I'm going to turn around so you can see what the back's like and then I'm going to cut to me with it off so I can go through all the features on it. So this is the back of the vest, you know, with it on. Covers your back as well. It's um, more of a plate carrier than a vest. For those of you who don't know what that means, it means it can carry bulletproof um, inserts, the sappy plates, as I mentioned before. But this will carry the modern shaped ones for your body. Um, this is maybe slightly higher than it should be regularly. But with my actual gear in, it weighs it down a bit. Because usually it's supposed to be from your sternum. Uh, it's supposed to cover your sternum. So it's from about kind of like the top of your ribs to the bottom of your ribs thereabouts for the fit um, when this is on properly because it weighs down at the back a bit when I get all my kit on it holds it just a bit of a better shape but that's pretty much it so we'll cut to me going through it all just about now so I'm just gonna go through the features on this vest and why I personally chose this vest and why it might be a good idea if you're looking for a vest to go for something like this now I like this because it's quite a you know it's a low profile vest it's quite cut in at the shoulders here um, I believe it's actually designed for Marines. I'm not sure which Marines, whether it's US, British, like Royal Marines or any other country's Marines. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I believe it's designed for the Marines. I might be wrong about that. Um, so this is the kind of base of the vest is, you know, it's two very similarly shaped panels and these like um, side molly webbings. Now, there's a couple of inbuilt pouches on this vest that were kind of that came with it almost, not external pouches like this. So the first one of those is here. There is actually a map pouch here. Um, it's got a lot of Velcro on it and it's very strong Velcro because I almost never use it because I don't really carry around maps. But I sometimes stick a couple of spare mags in there if I'm carrying more mags. Um, and it's just this kind of front panel all open up, which is quite cool. Um, it's got a radio pouch on each side, on the inside here, and uh, this one is actually under here because I'll show you the investment, the adjustment of the vest in a minute. Um, and for me, because I'm quite a slim person, the radio pouch on this side is about there. So I'd probably use this pouch if I was using a radio. Now, on the back of it, it's got a DRD, a drag rescue device. Um, for airsoft, it's quite cool just to carry it by. But for the real world applications, that's used to literally drag a down soldier. Um, you know, there might be a time where someone's taken a round in a leg, maybe stood on some kind of mine IED and really damaged their legs. Then you would use that if you had to. Um, hopefully you'd never have to use it for that in airsoft. But I suppose there's a chance if someone falls and breaks their leg that you might have to help them out. So it's just a cool thing to have on there, it's a bit of realism, and you can see it's stitched in right down here, so that'll easily hold my weight. I've been lifted up by this. Um, so, you know, it's going to hold quite a bit of weight on that handle alone. Now the other cool bits of the vest that I like are these uh, shoulder pads. They are actually padded shoulder pads, if I can ever get it open. All the Velcro on this vest is incredibly strong. Um, let's just open this up a bit. Like once I've adjusted it, I need it because it takes a long time to get into it. There we go. And you can then adjust the length of the shoulder strap here. I've got a bit of excess folded up. And um, so then when you've got it to about how long or short you want it, you just fold this right back over the top and you've got your padded shoulders on there again. Uh, I don't believe you can actually take them off completely. I think they are actually attached, but you may well be able to. I haven't actually ever tried that. Uh, you do actually have this little pouch here, which is kind of like an ID pouch. There's probably enough space in there for an ID card, maybe a small wallet or something like that, which is quite cool to have, I suppose. Um, on the front of the vest, at both sides, kind of tucked away, I've Velcroed them in, are two little loops here and here. And there is the same thing on the back, which is here and here. And then again on the shoulders, which I've again tucked away because it's Velcro all over this vest for you, for you to attach it to. 
and therefore if you're carrying a hydration carrier or a molly hydration carrier that you've attached you can run the hose down and actually strap it to you so it's not flopping all over the place or I suppose you could put uh, radio wires in that but I tend to actually put the radio wires in the shoulder pads and then have the earpiece coming up if you're using an earpiece or a throat mic whatever I just I think that's a better use for wires and use these for actual hydration carrier hoses but it's quite cool they've got them on both sides so whichever side you run your hydration carrier you can use it um, then the adjustment of the vest as I said I'll go through is a case of lifting this front section up which there is three tabs to do that with here and when that's lifted up you re reveal this see there's the other radio pouch for me um, and you adjust it by simply pulling these sides off As you can see, I don't really use the Velcro like that. And you can take it all the way apart like that, but I tend to leave this side Velcroed in. That's obviously not exact. And then I just pull this side over as far as I need it and put this down. Obviously, that's going to look a bit weird now because there are angles, but that's pretty much what how you um, adjust this vest. Now, you can actually insert plates in here. There's another bigger tab right at the bottom of the vest, if I can get it upright again, just here. And if you pull on that, uh, I'll flip all of the rest of the vest out of the way so you can see it. Right, here we go. If you actually pull on this, which is the bottom of the vest, you open up this area here. And that will actually fit a ballistic sappy plate in there, which will go all the way up into the chest and protect you. There is a similar uh, pouch on the back of the vest as well, just here. Again, same system, pull that, slide the pouch inside, put it over. Now, the last thing I'm going to mention in this video is the accessories I've put on here. As I've said before, you have my two M4 pouches. As you can also see, I have a torch, which I mainly put on for show because I had a torch that wasn't working very well. And I thought, you know, just to add something else on here, I'll put it on. I suppose you could put um, a backup torch, maybe, if you use a torch on your gun. Uh, this is just a little mag light. It works quite well, but... It's not LED or anything, so it's not amazingly bright. But you could put, like, um, I know in some videos I've seen with, uh, obviously, if you watch the Haley strategic videos, he has uh, some much more high-powered torches. You could put a surefire torch in there or something like that. I have these two mini carabiners, um, or carabiners, however you want to pronounce it. They're basically mini versions of climbing clips. Don't use them for climbing. Obviously, they're going to drop you. They're not designed for that. But I had a couple spare from holding gear to my harness, like I use it to hold a chalk bag on or something, or something like that. But uh, these are actually quite good for just holding my gloves or my helmet, is pretty much why I use them. On this side I have a multi-tool. Um, I actually have my Leatherman in here, which is always good to have at Airsoft Games. Um, because you've got all the tools and stuff on there that you need. It's also, I usually if I'm doing anything like airsoft or archery, I'll have a knife with me for, you know, knives are, in my opinion, one of the most useful tools on the planet because they can do almost everything. So uh, that's why I'll always carry that. And then on the back here, I just have a dump pouch. Um, it's quite, it's a bit higher than most people have. Most people have it on their waist, but this way it keeps the dump magazines out of the way of my legs if I'm running so I don't catch my legs on them and kick them out or anything like that. That's why I've got it there. And as you might have guessed, this isn't a real dump pouch. This is actually a bag. Some Blackhawk gear of mine came in. So I've literally just cable tied it on. Uh, it's the same way I attached my multi-tool pouch, just cable ties through the molly. And uh, that worked really well to hold it on. So that's it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, drop us a like voting. Um, Drop any comments if you've got any, or any suggestions, anything like that, or send me a message if you don't want to put it in the comments. Um, if you subscribe, you'll see all the videos that come up, obviously, and there is a set schedule for these videos to be coming up, so you'll be able to tune in every week and see a specific type of video that you want to watch. I'm Stout Stanning, and that's pretty much the end of it. I hope you have a good time between now and my next video, and we will see you then.